Hello, this video shows how to make a directed mesh in Star CCM. You might do that if you want to have a nice, uh, pretty much rectilinear mesh, like what you might create in open foam with the block mesh technique, but you can do it in Star CCM. So let's look at how to do that. I've already imported a CAD model here. This is representing a sort of channel, maybe that you might run a supersonic simulation with, have an incoming supersonic flow which interacts with this ramp, creating an oblique shock wave. But you can do whatever you want to do, of course. So let's look at how you'd make a directed mesh for this model. We have our CAD model here. First, we want to convert it into a geometry part. So new geometry part. And here it is. Let's go ahead and look at that with a geometry scene. Here it is. All right, for the directed meshing to work, you need to assign parts to regions. And in order to do that, you need to have part surfaces. So let's go ahead and check that our model has labeled part surfaces. I don't know if, if it does or not. Here, let's close this under surfaces. Oh, good, I have already labeled these, so you would do that yourself, but I have a back, front, bottom, top, inlet and outlet. But all we really need for the directed meshing part is the back and the front. So let's start that operation. We'll go to operations, mesh, directed mesh, select body, click OK, right click the directed mesh and edit it. And now we have all the things we need to select. Source surfaces, we're going to select the back surface. Target will be the front. We're going to drag this surface mesh from the back to the front, and that is our directed mesh. Connected parts, this is auto selected, good to go. Okay, source meshes. We're going to use a patch mesh. Click body, okay. Now we need to define the patches for this patch mesh. It's sort of like defining the blocks if you're familiar with open foam. So first we'll click this green flag to get us started. It populates a few edges and a few green dots. We just need to finish it up. So I know that I want to do a block here, a block here, and a block here. So I need a few more dots. Let's uh, split this line up by clicking across from this dot and split it up again by clicking across from here. It's not exact, but it's close enough. To do that, I click the scissor icon. Now we just need to connect all these dots. So we'll click this icon, select this dot, select this dot. I like to go uh, deselect and reselect that icon so that I don't make a line I don't wanna make. And, and then we've connected all the lines and everything turns green, indicating that our patches are defined. So now we switch from patch topology mode over to patch mesh. We click these lines and we define how many divisions we want along each line. Let's do 40 along these lines. And this is a really long section, so how about 100? Maybe 40 here as well. And how about 60 down here? So now that I've defined all those numbers, it generates the source mesh. So that looks good, but what if I reason that, okay, these are walls of the channel and I wanna have more resolution at the wall so I can resolve that boundary layer, sort of akin to the prism layers that you might've worked with. We can do that with patch meshing. We'll click uh, these lines and under distribution, we'll select two-sided hyperbolic. And just from playing around with this, I've found that 0.001 isn't is pretty good for this case. We'll apply that and take a look. So zooming in, we see that we have thinner cells here at the boundary and coarser in the middle. Okay, so we'll close this. And of course, you can apply this sort of distribution along your other blocks as well. So I've clicked these lines. I can select uh, hyperbolic or geometric as well for distribution. So the last thing we need to do is define the volume distribution. Click body, 
here's our volume distribution. And what you need to change is the number of layers. This is the number of divisions in the Z direction. It's currently set to eight. I'll just leave it as eight. So we're ready to right click directed mesh and execute. But let's see what happens. Ah, it says volume mesh generation cannot continue because we don't have these parts assigned to regions. So let's do that. Click your geometry part, assign parts to regions, one region for all parts, create a boundary for each part surface. And now we should be able to execute this. It's generating the mesh. So let's go to a mesh scene. And here it is. All across the domain is that same patch mesh that we created, and it's repeated eight times the number of layers in the Z direction. All right, good luck.